Ladies and gentlemen and gentlemen of the college, welcome to speech day. I join with the chairman, the head prefect and the president of the OCs uh, to welcome you here. We're trying to convey uh, what speech day would have been like. Um, I stand in an empty hall and I have plugged in earphones so you don't hear the echo. Um, but uh, we'll try our best to imagine what speech day uh, should have been like. Um, yesterday I recorded the final assembly of the year based on a passage from Ecclesiastes that talks about a time for everything, a time to laugh and a time to weep, a time to mourn, a time to dance. And I did that because when I reflect on the year, I think of a year of contrasts. Um, we began by seeing our boys from the pipe band uh, on tour in, uh, in Belgium, in France, as they went to the Menin Gate, of the Ulster Tower, and to the individual graves of every Campbellian who fell in that first war conflict. And the example that they set was fantastic of leadership, service, commitment to the community. And we come to the end of the year, um, where instead of a, a time of celebration, we've been in a time of quiet, of concern. And still I see the pipe band um, leading in that as the boys have gone out on Thursday evenings uh, to encourage uh, the celebration of those who are NHS workers. And our boys stood in their uh, home, outside their homes uh, to encourage uh, the clapping and the applause. August began uh, the year with the 125th celebration and with results. Uh, results were, were good, we were pleased with them, uh, particularly with GCSE that took a real leap forward. The 125th celebrations brought together old Cambellians, current Cambellians, uh, mums and dads, staff uh, and friends of the college as we considered the uh, effect of the last 125 years of Campbell uh, amongst uh, society here uh, and beyond. Um, it really set a tone for the, for the year ahead and we were delighted with how uh, term began. Term also saw the largest enrolment that the school has had of 955, 155 boys in the boarding house from nearly 30 different countries. And so we are always aware of the cultural effect that the boarding house has on us. And we believe in Campbell there is a culture of tolerance and respect so uh, positively contributed to uh, by the boys from boarding. We officially opened a new um, section of the boarding house in November with Robin Fletcher, the chief executive of Boarding Schools Association coming across uh, to open for us. Uh, we now offer 106 ensuite bedrooms with an additional 100 beds. So we have quite a capacity in the school and we look forward uh, to filling it. We uh, were celebrating a number of partnerships that happened throughout the year with local primary schools. So for example, we work with Strandtown and St. Joseph's uh, to launch the C.S. Lewis Festival down in Central Station. Again, TransLink wanted uh, something special uh, to announce the, the launch of their, their new Central, Central Station. We have a partnership just grown this year with Strathairn School uh, as we open CCF and girls from uh, Strathern come up every week. Approximately 30 have been attending and enjoying cadets and we hope that will build and develop uh, throughout the years ahead. By January, we were into the busyness of open days and we saw more visitors to the college than ever before. And again, reflected in the subsequent applications, demand for the college has never been higher. Reporting positive things is easy, uh, but that's not always the case and by uh, February, we were beginning to consider uh, the implications of, of coronavirus. And so we had things such as uh, the cancellation of uh, ski trips and cancellation of other trips to consider. And then finally, almost simultaneous to the celebration we had of winning the medallion shield, we had to uh, lock down and uh, close school. Schools are places of activity, places of social interaction. And so without that, what, what would happen? What would we do? Well, I am delighted to report how well Campbell was ready and that CCB Online was established very quickly. And our boys, uh, through the Firefly platform, uh, were given uh, school 
um, not as good as normal school, um, but certainly uh, they had a very positive and encouraging uh, experience. And feedback from parents has told us that very, very strongly. Our staff also appeared on television demonstrating how Zoom could allow class to take place from Belfast to Bangor and from Austria to Hong Kong simultaneously. And that was just great to see. We endured the saddest of all things, however, and our uh, experience of the loss of Lewis McCracken, uh, his sudden death, uh, was just simply dreadful. Our hearts, uh, our prayers go out to the McCracken family. Our condolences and sympathy uh, still to his mother and his father and his siblings and to all who loved this quiet, quiet gentleman. Uh, our prayers uh, to you again this afternoon. The staff are of one accord in the belief that year 14 were hit hardest by lockdown. No exams, no study leave, no end of school silliness, no revision time, no goodbyes, indeed no formal. And so I want to take time now just to say uh, well done to those boys who have spent seven years with us as they have turned from primary school children into young men. Indeed, I've just observed one of those members of the pipe band who has been with the pipe band for so long. Um, I'm not sure I should confess this. He's leaving the pipe band, so the, the tradition they tell me is that he gets a hip flask. I thought, hashtag only at Campbell. Um, can I encourage boys who are uh, leaving us this year to listen carefully to the message from Miles Nelson, the old Cambellian president, inviting them to belong to the society. Once a Cambellian, always a Cambellian. Uh, please uh, join uh, the OCs and stay connected with us. Finally, I want to pass some comment on staff changes. Uh, but before I do that, just I do want to say again, our condolences and sympathy uh, to those who uh, knew and loved uh, David Oldfield. David taught with us here for 30 years. He was a big character, brought joy uh, alongside his prowess as a teacher, an educator and a thinker. Uh, and our, uh, our sympathy to his family and loved ones. Staff changes uh, have been few this year. Mr Mark Cousins, uh, maths teacher left us in October uh, to become head of mathematics in Craig Avon Senior High School. Mr Cousins had been with us for 13 years, was head of year and timetabler. Uh, we wish him well in his new position. And Mr John Ray left the English department at the end of the spring term to become head of English at Bangor Grammar School. John was with us from 2007, a man with a pastoral heart, uh, head of year, head of junior boarding. And again, we wish him every success in his new position. We welcome officially to the college Mr. Daniel Ledwich to the mathematics department and Mr. David Gilliland to the English department. We uh, want to say welcome also to those who are joining us in a temporary capacity. Mr. Connor Spence, Mr. Robert Hunter to the mathematics department and Mr. Sam McClure to the English department. And finally, may I say how Disappointed I am that the Reverend David Bruce, OC 5907, the new moderator of the Presbyterian Church, was not able to join us as our chief guest on speech day. Um, David is also very disappointed and expresses his hope uh, to be with us uh, throughout uh, the year ahead. I remain immensely proud to be the headmaster of this wonderful school. This is my ninth time in delivering uh, the speech day address and it remains a joy for me to do so. My best wishes to one and all for the summer ahead. I look forward to seeing you in September. Ni Oblo Wiscaris. Thank you for listening. I well remember my cricket master back in Cabin Hill, explaining to me just how important timing was for a successful batsman. I'm afraid I didn't make the first 11, and it has recently occurred to me that my timing skills may well not have greatly improved since those days in the 70s. 
I say that because it was only as recently as the 27th of February that I assumed my current role as Chairman of the Board of Governors of Campbell. My timing was perhaps once again somewhat less than optimal in that literally within three weeks of so doing, as coronavirus spread inexorably across the entire world, was not simply this college, but the nation generally plunged into the most far-reaching social and economic crisis known since the Second World War. Words and phrases we had previously scarcely heard of. Pandemic, self-isolation, the R number and social distancing, all of these suddenly seemed to confront us and hem us in on every side. As a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, this country has been subjected to widespread sickness, suffering, and the tragic and premature loss of all too many loved and cherished individual lives. However, history tells us that in the midst of great suffering are often found acts of great sacrifice, acts of selfless duty and service. As a school community, we remember with gratitude and thankfulness the work and dedication of all those on the NHS and care home front lines whose tireless efforts have controlled and now suppressed to a significant extent the spread of the virus in our midst. Within the Campbell community, there has equally been much dedication and service for us to now recognise, commend and be proud of. Even though not obliged so to do, the college kept open its doors throughout the very worst of the lockdown period, forming a hub in conjunction with Strathern and enabling the children of NHS and other key workers to continue to study in a safe and supervised environment. I want on your behalf to thank and pay tribute to all the Campbell staff who undertook and discharged these important responsibilities. Equally, I want to formally recognise the huge amount of work and effort which teaching staff have put into a multiplicity of imaginative and inspirational remote learning programmes and strategies, encompassing not only curriculum-based teaching, but also extending to embrace the wider aspects of pastoral care. Programmes which we are reliably informed have been envied by many other grammar schools and which we believe have been surpassed by none. Again, on your behalf, I want to thank all members of teaching staff who have so enthusiastically stepped forward and delivered to such a high level the design and deployment of the college's remote learning programmes, and also to thank staff for all of the huge effort they have recently put into the formulation of proposals for this summer's GCSE and A2 grades. As one of only two voluntary B grammar schools in Northern Ireland, Campbell receives from the department no financial assistance towards the cost of capital expenditure, including the costs of maintaining our buildings and estate, all of which we must fund ourselves from our own resources. Those costs, which are substantial, have continued to accrue relentlessly since March. And yet the college, by reason of the lockdown, has lost out on a full term of boarding fees and its summer letting fee income. The current crisis has, as a result, had a serious adverse impact upon the finances of the college. And as a result, substantial programmes of maintenance and refurbishment scheduled to take place this summer have unfortunately had to be deferred into the future. All of that means that the continued practical, moral and financial support of Campbell parents pupils, old Campbellians and friends of the college is now all the more important and all the more appreciated as we and the board, through difficult times, seek to safeguard the financial viability of the college and to do all that we can to ensure that current and future Campbellians will be able to enjoy not only all that the impressively varied curriculum here has to offer, but also the extensive extracurricular benefits which being part of the Campbell community has for many years meant for the young men of this college. As the end of summer term approaches, and as the restrictions imposed during the lockdown are progressively eased, the college community now looks forward with confidence 
and renewed expectation to the start of next term and to the opportunities which lie ahead. We eagerly look forward to the return of our borders, both from overseas and from closer to home, and also to the return of our day boys. Whilst guidance from the department as to exactly what restrictions are likely to remain in place come the reopening of the college in August, might appear to alter on literally a daily basis, parents, guardians and pupils can all rest assured that extensive preparatory and planning work has already been carried out at Campbell to enable us to meet and exceed whatever social distancing mechanisms will be required, and so as best we can to safeguard the welfare of staff and pupils alike. I want to sincerely thank my colleagues in the Board of Governors for their hard work and support for the College over the last three difficult and challenging months. I notably want to thank Mrs Caroline van der Feltz, who retires from the Board after a number of years' service. For those young men amongst you who must now wait patiently for results in the forthcoming GCSE and A2 assessment processes, including all those who will leave Campbell at the end of this term, we in the Board of Governors wish you every success and real fulfilment and contentment in whatever endeavours or fields of activity you may have set your hearts upon for the future. The very best wishes of the entire Campbell community will go with you. Good afternoon everyone on what is certainly a very different looking speech day. Not having to get all dressed up, pose for photos or involuntarily having to listen to the head prefect's speech. I remember this time last year at speech day listening to Gary Lightbody reminiscing about his days at Campbell and then deciding that Mr Devlin and I could compose an anthem deck like double act in a year's time. Fortunately for everyone else, especially Mr Devlin, current circumstances mean that is unable to happen. My name is Henry Ockmoody, and whilst this academic year has unfortunately come to a premature end, it has been an absolute privilege to be head prefect for the last 10 months. I arrived at Campbell College Junior School as a feeble six-year-old in 2008. I wasn't sure what to expect, especially after a tour a few weeks prior, wearing the Inch Marlow uniform. However, 12 years later, I will leave with fond memories, from playing rugby on Fox's Field to joking with friends and teachers alike. Even though I was a junior school boy, I was slightly apprehensive about the transition to senior school, but nevertheless, looking forward to the much anticipated prospect of wearing long trousers. Little did I realise Campbell had so much more to offer on top of the great teaching, from every sport imaginable to other extracurricular activities such as choir. I wanted to give everything a go. Having a brother two years above me, Many teachers quickly realised that they had the misfortune of teaching another Ockmoody boy for the foreseeable future. After a few weeks, I got used to being called Charles and gave up trying to correct my housemaster, Mr Hall, for the 50th time. On top of all this, Mr Hall threw me in at the deep end, literally with house swimming and early competition. Next was house maths, then house cross country. Before I knew it, I was involved in so many activities and had really began to find my feet in Campbell, thanks to so many teachers who don't just see this place as somewhere which provides an education, but also an environment which allows us to develop as individuals. I will always be grateful for that, and I'm sure all of year 14 will agree with me in saying that we're really going to miss it here. When I think about what I'll remember about Campbell, the first thing that comes to mind is the people. Not just those currently in Campbell, but also old Campbellians. When you join Campbell in first year, you become part of a wider community that you will be part of for so much longer than the seven years you spend here. 
Also, the opportunity to meet people from all walks of life ensures that you make memories here you couldn't possibly make anywhere else. I'll always remember in first year when Mrs. Wilson let us out of music half an hour late. So the logical response of 25 11 year olds was to arrive half an hour late to geography. Safe to say Mrs. Irwin didn't quite agree with our reasoning. Being part of Campbell is all about joining these little dots into realising that you're part of the legacy that Campbell continues to create. And the only way to join the dots is to put yourself out there, move away from your comfort zone and just embrace it all. Over my seven years in the senior school, I've been fortunate enough to see us lift the school's cup, participate in the memorable one, two, five year celebrations of the school, and now experience the unique prospect of potentially getting into university without the struggle of exams. We will go down in history as the COVID class of 2020 with no exams. Over the years, I've tried my hand at many things, from embarrassing myself in house drama to the thrill of shark diving in South Africa. I've had immense fulfillment out of sport in Campbell, whether that has been rugby, cricket or volleyball, but also through house events, not wanting to waste any of my valuable time here. It goes without saying that the past few months have been eventful to say the least, and next year will look different in many ways. I was reminded of this quotation a few weeks ago, which brings a lot of positivity during these challenging times. In times of adversity and change, we really discover who we are and what we are made of. Whilst we don't know exactly what school will look like for all of you in September, it's important that you work together with fellow pupils and teachers to build back up the unique community that Campbell has always had to offer, but also to enjoy whatever time you have left here. I would like to pass on my best wishes to George Robinson, the incoming head prefect. Having been through junior school, played rugby and sang in the choir with George, I couldn't think of a better suited pupil to help lead the school through what will no doubt be a different looking academic year and wish him all the best in the role. I take this opportunity to publicly thank Harry, Ross and Reuben, the three deputy head prefects this year, who have all been a valuable asset and made my job as head prefect so much easier. Credit must go to Mr. Robinson and all the teachers who have put up with us for so long and for the constant reminder that they are not the ones sitting the exams. Well, on this rare occasion, we can fortunately say, neither are we, as I move on, hopefully to Exeter University in September to study maths with finance. Honestly, your dedicated work makes Campbell the place it is and along with each individual member of staff, help this school to go from strength to strength. Years ago, I dreaded the alarm clock on a school morning. Now, I dread the thought of no longer walking through the doors as a pupil. To everyone that has made my journey what it is, thank you. I will never forget my time here, the memories I've made, but most importantly, the people I've shared my 12 years with. Neb Libiscaris. Pipes and jumps, by the center, quick march.
Good afternoon. I am Miles Nelson, President of the Old Companion Society. I am delighted to report to you that the Society continues to flourish. We look forward to welcoming this year's school leavers as members of the Old Companion Society and invite you to become involved in the many different activities that will allow you to stay in touch with your friends and the college. On a sporting front, we have cricket and hockey against the college, not to mention the Old Cambellians golf competition and Boxing Day rugby match. Socially, the Society's annual dinner is held in the college in February. This provides an excellent opportunity for a reunion with old class groups or teammates. There are opportunities to get together with old Cambellians outside Northern Ireland as well. Our website continues to expand and our highly celebrated magazine, The Old Cambellian, keeps us right up to date with all news and views. The Society exists to preserve the bond that unites us through the College. Old Cambellians are here to help each other. The Society's success depends on what we make of it and I strongly recommend you all become involved. Yeah.